Hi there and welcome back to my next tutorial. I'm SR Code and we're going to run through ML API and this time we're going to be working on character controller movement. Um, so we've picked up from where we left off the last time inside of a project. We've got a very simple um, player prefab and the network manager where we can start uh, hosts and start clients and connect up. Um, this player prefab obviously is a bit rubbish so we're going to try and make this a little bit better. So right now um, we need to uh, be able to get this moving around so we're going to start real simple with a character controller so um, if you remember rightly the last time so I'll make this big so the player mesh right here has got a um, capsule collider on it the first thing we want to do is just get rid of that component we want all of the kind of collision and stuff to work on the top level one so if we want to be able to transform our, or sorry synchronize the transform across the network we're going to have to have the network transform component so you'll find that again inside of the ml api folder and we'll just choose network transform so this will synchronize the network for this network object um, the next thing we're going to do is create ourselves a character controller from the physics menu so character controller is pretty simple and we're just going to write some code to move this character controller around and hopefully we'll see it working across the uh, network so um, we're actually going to code that from scratch uh, just so you can see the process. So um, we have uh, just need to create that code. So we'll click create new C sharp code and I'm going to call mine um, player movement because it'll be for player movement. And just once this uh, once this compiles, we'll just put player movement um, onto the player prefab. So click on player and drag that on. So it's on the top level right here. And we're just going to run, um, write a little script to grab a hold of that character controller and uh, and move it around with some input. So hopefully we'll uh, learn some stuff along the way. So um, we're just going to write this kind of like as a local script without ML API right now. So I can show you um, what happens um, when you don't do that. So um, this none of this should be um, unusual to you. So I'm going to get the character controller component with uh, and cache the value. So at start we're going to say um, uh, get component and then use character controller. Um, that allows me inside of the update to uh, use that. So um, what I might do is just separate these out a little bit. So if I make a, a new method and we'll call this um, move player um, we should be able to uh, just call this inside of the update so um, if I call it right there and do it now I won't forget so all this inside of update I'll call move player every single frame so I'm um, just gonna I don't know if you've ever done this before we're just gonna use this by making a, a vector 3 and we're gonna call it um, move and uh, we're just gonna initialize it from the um, the input value so I'm gonna say new vector 3 and then I'm going to use input dot get access and choose horizontal. Make sure I spelt that right. And then zero. And then input dot get access and vertical. Make sure I spell that right too. Um, so this creates this new vector three. Why it's cool is because <coughs> what we can do is clamp the value. So we can say move equals and choose vector three dot clamp magnitude um, so that and uh, move and then clamp it to one um, why that's important is because um, this will be a value of one and this will be a value of one and if you had um, if you you go faster diagonal than you would be going if you were going straight because these two values if you add them together end up the actual magnitude of the vector will be longer than one so that's not a good thing so uh, this way it just kind of like uh, normalizes it back to one if it if that happens to be the case um the next thing we're going to do is on the character controller we're just going to use that so we're going to say um cc oh i'm actually going to use uh, the simple move one um, and we're going to say move and then multiply that by some sort of speed so I'm just going to say 5. Uh, this obviously should be a public variable um, rather than just hard code it in here but just for the speed we're going to get that up and running. So I just wanted to show you what happens just so you can get your head around what's going on um, within network games. Um, this simple script hopefully is now attached and will work on the player. Um, 
this, uh, if we go back out to here, I'm just going to show you the um, the network version of this. So the script should be up and running. So if you run this, um, what you'll see is that the, the script actually works uh, as expected, or it should work as expected um, if you're the host. So I can click here and I can move around. Um, if I connect up here as well and just run this one, you should see, uh, and I've had some hit and miss with this one, but if I start as a client here and I click and move, you'll see that it's working on both. And that that kind of makes sense if you think about it, because effectively we have player clone right here that has this script over here that's getting the input and moving the character controller but we've also got this one which is the connected one and that's also got this script and that's also getting input and it's also moving so it kind of like this is an interesting way to get your head around how network games kind of work um, what we need to do is we need to restrict stuff that happens um, on uh, the local player and uh, and the ones that happen on the clone and I'm just going to quickly unplay this and unplay this one just so I can show you that in action. So it's uh, it's really pretty simple. It's the basis of these multiplayer games. So first up, um, MLAPI uh, makes things uh, fairly simple and like the other the other um, engines that do multiplayer within Unity as well, they, they have similar processes. So I'm going to add this using MLAPI and I'm going to change this mono behavior to a networked behavior. So uh, this network behavior is a really cool piece of uh, code. It inherits from mono behavior as well. So it's basically extending mono behavior. So nothing, nothing else really needs to change. Um, but we can have access now to a thing called, uh, I'll do it over here, um, is local player. So this is a simple Boolean that uh, decides on that decides on whether this is the local player to uh, to this connected machine so um, it's incredibly handy so what you can do is just make sure that you um, if I do an if statement I'm going to say if we're the local player we want to do all the moving stuff um, if we're not the local player we don't want to do any of the moving stuff um, you can separate it out and you just have to think hard about when you're coding about what it is that you need the, ha the local player to do and um, and what parts of that if any you want the um, connected clients to do and there are sometimes a situation where you have to separate things out so that they don't all happen at the same time so this move player um, method will only get called if we're the local player so in theory that should have solved the problem so um, I do want to test this and uh, um, you just bear with me while I do this because I want to make sure that it does work um, and just to prove it to you and then we can go a bit faster with some of the other stuff so um, this should be uh, ready to run and um, we'll hit the play here click on the network manager go down to start host so this guy can move around and hopefully um, if I click over here and um, play on this one too and uh, make sure the network manager's up and start the client. We should see that we're moving around um, independently this time. So the local player is clearly this one right here. And uh, if I click over on this side, the local player is clearly for this machine or this instance is uh, this player over here. Uh, so hopefully that makes things uh, make things a little bit clearer about how that works and how this local player is such a great um, addition to the uh, to the coding that you're going to do for multiplayer. Alright, so the next thing we really want to do is uh, just get some mouse movement for this player. So I'm just going to make this big and we'll make some changes. So I want the camera to be part of this player as well. So if I just, um, on top of the player, if I um, create the camera as well. So this will just be our player camera. Um, <clears throat> the camera, we're going to leave everything as it is. And just so I can see which direction the player is facing in. I'm also going to add from the 3D object uh, a cube and this cube is going to be a child of the camera so I'll just drag that on and um, I've done this before in the last one so I'm going to make this 0 0.8, 0 0.2 and uh, 0.4 and just move this up and forward so this looks kind of like the oh, actually what I'll do is I'll move the camera up so that we're cameras around about the height of the player's eyes and then move the cube just forward so that we can look like a bit of a visor sticking out the front I'm going to leave it this ugly white colour as well. So uh, now that that's done, um, let's check that there's no meshes on that one. 
So drag that out right now. So the, the new player prefab, we want to write some code to uh, make it turn around. So um, we'll just get straight to that. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is create this camera transform so we're able to pitch it up and down. Um, and then just make a new method. And in this we're going to just look uh, using the mouse axis. So we'll create a floating point called mouse x and get that mouse axis input. Just multiply it by some value for the mouse sensitivity. Um, next we'll just be just rotating around the y axis. And because we're rotating around the y axis, it's really important that we move in the right direction. So I'm just using this transform direction with the move axis so that we're able to move in the direction we're actually going. This is based on the uh, actual transform of the object. We'll just test this now, make sure that we can move in the direction that we're supposed to be facing. and starting the host and everything works just as expected. Alright, now that we can make it look right and left, let's make it look up and down. So I'm going to create a public floating point variable called pitch and we're going to change that based on the um, mouse input. So down in the look method, we're just going to change pitch to be minus equal to the input dot get axis uh, and use the mouse y axis this time and just multiply that by some um, sensitivity value. The next thing we can do with this is just clamp this value. So if I say pitch equals and use the mathf.clamp, so mathf.clamp will clamp um, any val value to a minimum and a maximum. So I'll use minus 45 for the minimum and 45 for the maximum and that clamps that value. Then we use the pitch value to um, set the camera transform. So we set the local rotation and a pass in the quaternion using that pitch, so quaternion.euler and use the pitch value. And then we just have to test it, make sure it works. And going into here. So it's pretty important now we go into the end prefab and uh, attach that camera. So if you just go to the prefab and click on the player, we see the camera slot now. So that camera transform, just drag the camera on and, uh, and that should work. And we'll just test this now to make sure it works. Um, and this will work only locally right now. Um, so if we start the server, we should be able to pitch up and down. So this uh, this is all um, working locally. Um, and then in this next bit, we'll make it networked. So to uh, make this uh, first person controller network ready, one of the most important things that we're going to have to do is to make sure that we've only got one camera on the scene and uh, and we disable all the other components. So you'll see here that um, if we have two of these on the scene, the and both of them have an active camera, the chances are that um, now and again, uh, and you may have found this already when you've been testing it, that the, it, it chooses the wrong camera. So we're going to have to disable those components and we're going to have to add in a way of having this camera transform tracked. Um, a couple of different ways of doing it. We could introduce the new network uh, VARs and uh, do it that way, but the easiest way i found is something that some of the other uh, multiplayer game engines don't do and you can simply add another network transform straight onto a child um, of a, of the main parent game object and it will use, it will not need to create any more um, components, it will just simply um, have a child transform automatically done by the top level um, network object. So uh, that's a really handy thing, this network transform just works on the children as well and you can have, as, as far as I'm aware, you can have as many as you like on the object. So. Um, the, that's one change, so add to the camera because we're going to change. The, we've already changed the pitch of the camera. If we add a, a tra network transform, it will track the transform um, of that object um, as we move through the network. Uh, the next thing is, if we go back to our code, we're going to have to change a couple of things here. So um, we just want to make sure that we are um, enabling and disabling the correct things uh, inside of the start. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to say, if we're um, if we're the local player. Um, we want to try and find from this uh, this camera transform. We can find those components 
um, sorry, if we're not the local player, we can find the components and disable them. So if we're not the local player, I can I can use this camera transform um, and then use the get component to try and find the audio listener because we want to disable the audio listener so that we don't get that annoying message. Um, if we say dot enabled equals false, um, we get the annoying message all the time um, saying that we, we have two audio listeners, so let's get rid of that. And um, We'll also want to get the actual camera component, so if we get the camera component and um, we can uh, set that to false as well. So we disable the camera and the audio listener if we're not the local player. If we are the local player, um, so we'll do an else, then we definitely want to find this um, character controller component so that we're able to access it later on in our code. Um, so if we're the local player, we're going to move and we're going to look and uh, we're going to change the um, pitch based on the input with that look. So I'm just going to test that as well. So we're back in the game and uh, you can see we've got um, the pitch uh, as we move up and down. Um, I'm working on the right hand side one here. As we move up and down you'll see that on the left hand side the, the, um, the host there that the uh, pitch of the character uh, goes up and down also and that'll be, uh, it's done really really smoothly. Um, you could do it any with the network var way but uh, I found that this is a really smooth way of doing it. So uh, we have a very simple movement um, networked across the um, across the game, and uh, in the next video, I think what we're maybe going to try and do is uh, get rid of this horrible menu so we can have buttons on the screen, um, or perhaps we'll work on shooting in the next one. Um, stay tuned for the next videos. I hope you're enjoying it, and please like and subscribe. Cheers.